With September coming to an end, I've decided to start a new series where every month I'll sort through the best games released on Steam during that month. I'll keep these videos as concise as possible and give you the basic information you need to decide whether or not you should take a closer look at said games. The criteria for the games featured in this month's episode will be a minimum of 300 user reviews, scoring at least 80% recommendations, which I think should give smaller indie games a chance to make the list. The games shown in this video are ordered by release date and I'll continue this series once per month for the foreseeable future if you guys show support for it. With that said, let's get on with the video. Lost Castle is an action RPG beat-em-up with roguelike elements and randomised dungeons. The game came to Steam on the 1st of September and has since received a 93% approval rating out of over 3,650 reviews. The game has a text-based narrative, a cartoony art style and was developed by Hunter Studio. Lost Castle also has the option to play both single player and co-op. To me, it definitely seems like it will be the most fun with friends. The Underground Man is a retro-styled 2D indie adventure game set in the post-apocalyptic underground ruins of Moscow. This game came to Steam on the 1st of September and has since received a 92% approval rating from over 810 reviews. The Underground Man features a unique system of character development where you actually write it yourself and the game also has a very nice retro soundtrack. As popular as this game is, however, it's not the kind of thing you're going to want to play if you hate reading a lot of text. because there's certainly a lot of that. The Curious Expedition is a roguelike expedition simulator and RPG with pixel graphics set in the 19th century. Initially, this game came to Steam on the 19th of May 2015 as early access, but after 30 updates, the game was finally released on the 2nd of September 2016 and has since received an 89% approval rating from over 540 reviews. This is a great example of how early access should be done. Regular updates, a clear vision and a timely release. The Curious Expedition also features procedurally generated worlds, the ability to interact with tribes and civilizations via trade, as well as resource management. Redout is a futuristic high-speed racing game that came to Steam on the 2nd of September 2016 and has since received an 89% approval rating from over 560 reviews. I actually decided to buy this game myself after watching an after-hour video Total Biscuit made about it, where he says that this game succeeds in being a spiritual successor to Wipeout. Redout features a career mode, online multiplayer against 12 players, upgradable vehicles, 20 different tracks and 7 event types as well as optional VR support for the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive. Due to the sheer speed of the game though, it's really difficult and certainly has a high skill cap. Definitely a game I'd recommend if you enjoy the old school futuristic racing games. Mother Russia Bleeds is an old-fashioned 2D beat-em-up set in a cold, ruthless Soviet Union. This game came to Steam on September the 5th, 2016 and has since received an 86% approval rating from over 820 reviews. Visually, the game is very retro and features pixel graphics, a ton of gore, violence, drug abuse and local co-op with up to four players. If you've had a tough day at the office and just want to mindlessly crush some skulls, then this could be the game for you. Catch Me is a multiplayer stealth game in which each player has their own base. Other players can rob your base and you can rob other players' bases in order to get money to pay for guards to make it harder for other people to rob your base. When playing the thief, you must avoid standing in the guard's flashlight, which appears as a telegraph on the screen. When standing in range of a flashlight, you take periodic damage until you die or manage to escape the guard. Catch Me initially came to Steam Early Access on the 11th of June 2016, however was fully released on the 5th of September 2016, receiving a 91% approval rating from over 390 reviews. So if you're looking for a low-cost stealth strategy game and don't care about the pixel graphics, this could be one to check out. Sisyphus Reborn is a short, free-to-play, atmospheric, linear story game that made its way onto Steam on the 6th of September 2016, after initially being released on the 19th of December 2014. The game has since received a 95% approval rating from over 310 reviews, and is a philosophical experience with point-and-click controls, hand-drawn art style, and an atmospheric soundtrack. The main complaint I've seen with this game, though, is at times it comes off as a bit pretentious. 
Project High Rise is simply a 2D skyscraper construction and management simulator. Starting out, you'll pick businesses that will pay you rent for space in your tower, and in return, you'll need to provide them with things like electricity, water, janitorial services, and technical support, which you do through building. Eventually, you earn more money, expand your tower, attract better businesses, and the cycle repeats. The main problem this game has, however, seems to be the lack of depth when it comes to the planning aspect. But regardless, the game came to Steam on the 8th of September, and so far, 82% of people out of over 390 reviews are enjoying it. Steins Gate is a visual novel based on the Steins Gate anime, which I definitely recommend watching if you're a fan of science and anime. It has a fantastic and intriguing story centered around time travel. The Western version of this game, however, was initially released in March 2014 on PC, however recently came to Steam on the 9th of September 2016, receiving 98% recommendations from over 500 reviews. The cool thing about this visual novel is that it's non-linear and has multiple different endings, based on your choices in-game and contains between 30 and 50 hours of reading time. So if you're a big fan of visual novels and anime, then this is one you should definitely consider looking into. Mad Games Tycoon is an indie management simulation and strategy game set in the early 1980s in a small garage where you set out to make your own video game studio. In this game, you'll need to create a team, develop your own game ideas, research new technologies, and upgrade your office space from a small garage to a huge building. Mad Games Tycoon came to Steam on the 13th of September 2016 and has since been recommended by 91% of the 1,965 reviews the game currently has has as of making this video. Personally, if I was looking for a management sim, this is the one I'd be picking up. Everspace is an early access single player roguelite action space shooter made in Unreal Engine 4. The game takes you through a challenging non linear story throughout an ever changing universe. Death in Everspace is inevitable, and upon death, you'll start again. However, the blueprints and upgrades you earned on your previous run will stay with you and make it easier to get back to the sector of space you died in previously. Visually, Everspace has a high amount of graphical fidelity and detail, as well as procedurally generated levels, hidden treasures, the choice between cockpit or third-person view, as well as upcoming support for the HTC Vive and Oculus Rift. Despite coming to Steam as early access on the 14th of September 2016, Everspace has already received an impressive 89% approval rating from over 560 reviews. If you're a fan of space shooters, you need to keep your eye on this one. Out of Ammo is the only game on this list that you can't actually play unless you have a virtual reality headset. In this case, it only works for the HTC Vive and doesn't support the Oculus Rift. This game officially released on Steam on the 15th of September 2016, receiving 93% recommendations from over 420 reviews. Out of Ammo is an FPS action strategy game about constructing defences, issuing orders and taking control of your soldiers to survive as long as you can. The game has three types of missions, free play which is basically wave defense with you as the commander, overwatch in which you play first person as a sniper, and Icarus where you play in first person and scavenge for ammo and survive until help arrives. Divinity Original Sin 2 is the sequel to the Divinity Original Sin released in June 2014. Original Sin 2 came to Steam as early access on September the 15th, 2016, and maintains much of what made the original Divinity game successful, such as the turn-based combat and RPG elements. Starting out, you'll need to choose a race, gender, class, and origin, and battle your way through a vast fantasy world, either alone or with up to four players, in drop-in, drop-out cooperative play. If you're not a fan of turn-based games with an isometric view, then this isn't the game for you. However, if you enjoy those more old-school RPGs, then this might be a game to keep your eye on because as of making this video, it's been recommended by 96% of the 570 reviews it has, despite being in early access. Paladins is certainly the biggest and most popular title to hit Steam this month. It's a free-to-play FPS hero shooter with MOBA elements that's currently in open beta. I covered Paladins in a separate video a few weeks ago and pissed off a bunch of people by mentioning that it has a few similarities to Overwatch when it comes to the heroes. But regardless, for a free-to-play game, there's definitely fun to be had with this one. The great thing about Paladins in comparison to other titles of the genre is that it's a highly accessible game. It's free-to-play, the system 
custom requirements are low, and due to how tanky each hero is, it's relatively new player friendly and easy to learn. Paladins also has an element of character customization, a collectible card system, and the ability to upgrade and adjust a character's core set of abilities to suit your own playstyle. As of making this video, 86% of people out of over 23,400 reviews recommend Paladins, so if you're part of the free to play crowd, there's no real reason not to at least give it a try. Price is a free-to-play detective puzzle and horror game made by a Chinese studio known as Yetu Game. Price came to Steam on the 16th of September 2016 and has since received 96% recommendations from over 1,100 reviews. In terms of gameplay and aesthetics, Price is a 2D game with an anime art style. Gameplay mostly involves point-and-click controls, a text-based narrative and a chilling Chinese soundtrack. I tried to play the game myself, however it wouldn't run for some reason but it very much seems to be a game about piecing together clues, searching for objects, and uncovering the story yourself. Battle Right is an action-packed team arena brawler with an isometric view that I covered a few weeks ago and had a ton of fun playing. Currently the game's in early access and costs $20 to play, however upon release will be free to play, with players who have already bought into the game receiving all of the content the game has to offer, as well as all future updates for free upon release. The last time I covered Battle Right I annoyed people by calling it a MOBA, which by definition it is. Battle Right is 100% a multiplayer online battle arena, However, it's nothing like League of Legends or Dota 2. There's no minion farming, laning, or anything like that. You're just thrown right into the action in teams of two or three and battle it out in a best of three last team standing wins format. Games are typically quite short, the game has a high skill cap, and the combat feels smooth and satisfying. It's a game that I'd describe as easy to learn, hard to master. As of making this video, Battle Right has been recommended by 95% of the 5,500 users that have currently reviewed it despite it still being in early access. I'd definitely recommend looking into this game if you like competitive top-down brawlers or MOBAs. Hades is a hardcore old-style Metroidvania mixed with modern-day third-person shooter and platformer with a very unique main character. The game came to Steam on the 26th of September 2016 and has since been recommended by 90% of the 365 people that have reviewed it. Personally, I didn't really enjoy Hades too much, I didn't think it controlled overly well, the lack of tutorial was infuriating and I just couldn't find any fun with the game. I, however, am just one person and clearly in the minority when you look at the Steam reviews for this game. I think I'm at the point now where I'd rather brush my teeth with compost than continue to play this game. A lot of people enjoy the complexity of the puzzles, the unforgiving nature of the game, and trying to find meaning in its non-existent narrative. It's certainly a game that you'll either love or hate. Smash and Grab's an interesting early access game. It's essentially a gang-themed third-person brawler with plenty of MOBA elements such as map design and abilities. The combat system itself works like rock, paper, scissors depending on if you choose to block, perform a grab attack or do a normal attack. Grab beats block, block beats normal attacks, and normal attacks beat grab, which adds an interesting meta outside of using your class-specific abilities. Aesthetically, the game has a decent amount of graphical fidelity and reminded me a lot of Rockstar's 2005 game The Warriors, which was based on the 1979 film. A great game and film, by the way. Upon starting a game in Smash and Grab, you'll need to loot stores for weapons, cash, and upgrades. There's two teams, East Side and West Side, each consisting of three players that control their own gang. The team that manages to kill and loot their way to a total score of $50,000 wins the game. Currently, Smash and Grab has an 80% approval rating from over 650 reviews, so it's only just managed to scrape its way into this list, but regardless, it's an interesting game that's best played with friends. Cluster Truck is an incredibly simple, chaotic, and fast-paced, physics-based first-person platformer that came to Steam on the 27th of September 2016 and has since been recommended by 90% of the 880 user reviews it currently has. What do you do in Cluster Truck, you ask? Well, simply put, you just jump on trucks and try not to touch the floor. The game has diverse levels, a minimalistic art style, a great soundtrack, as well as a level editor. The system requirements aren't very high either, so the barrier to entry is quite low for this game. 
Quantum Break is a story-driven time manipulation shooter that initially launched on the 5th of April 2016 as an Xbox One exclusive, however has recently came to Steam and PC on the 29th of September, so far receiving 89% recommendations from over 950 reviews as of making this video. Quantum Break was developed by Remedy Entertainment, the same team that brought us Max Payne and Alan Wake, and has been praised by critics for its TV-like storytelling, interesting use of time manipulation mechanics and overall style. The main drawback for this game, however, is it's relatively short, lasting about 10 hours, and a lot of complaints seem to be that the PC port isn't too great. So definitely do some research to see if you can actually run this game before picking it up. Otherwise, it seems like an above average third person shooter. Before we wrap up this video, I just want to mention a few other games that I've covered this month that I think may be worthy of your time that fell outside of the criteria of this list. Windscape is an early access third person RPG that dropped on the 1st of September. The game had a nostalgic soundtrack and art style that gave me vibes of The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker and a combat system similar to The Elder Scrolls. It's still early in development, but I really enjoyed the time I had with it. Seraph is a game that came to Steam on the 20th of September and is a really fun, fast-paced acrobatic shooter with auto-aim, which I initially didn't like the sound of, however quickly changed my mind when I realised that taking this approach allowed for some really fun dodging mechanics. It's more of a skill-based platformer than a shooter. It has some tough boss fights, an interesting progression system and flashy graphics. I personally recommend this one if you're into action-packed side-scrollers. And finally, Osiris New Dawn is a game I covered a few Few days ago. It came to Steam on the 28th of September as Early Access, and so far I think it's built the foundation for what could potentially be an incredible space survival game. It runs surprisingly well for an Early Access game, it's immersive, has a pretty solid crafting system, and allows you to build ships to take off from the planet and reach orbiting space stations. Currently there's about 10 hours worth of gameplay before you've done everything, and I'm just really excited to see this game further developed. So that's it for this video guys, I really hope you found it useful. As this is a new series and format, I'd appreciate your feedback in the comments below. And if this video gets a good reaction, I'll continue the series once per month for the foreseeable future. If there's any games that fell outside of the criteria for this video in September that you'd personally recommend, then leave it in a comment below. Thanks for watching, you take it easy, and I'll see you again in the next one. Oh fuck off! Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm building! Right, what the- Okay, run. Run. It just came in hot. It came in hot out of nowhere, and it's still coming in hot. Oh my god, it's just circling me, and I don't like it. It's a spooky alien monster, and where is it gone? Oh, what are you doing, dude?